Good morning, grandkids. Well, I finally found where I was supposed to be storing my books. This, this bookcase is just to the side of my doorway, the left side. And this open bookcase is where I've started to store the books I've read. So there's only three down there, so I'm gonna have to gather up the others I've already read and stick them down there too. And this side is empty and this side is empty. So I'll get all this filled up before ever I dart on any of the other bookshelves. And I'm gonna walk around and empty all of them. So the, these bookshelves around the walls will just be for me to fill up as I read. All right, today I shall go over here and sit down. Let's see if there's a nice place over here to sit in my bedroom. No, guess not. <laughs> Got wood stacked up in my bedroom and, and... Hey, I need to put some clothes on that guy, don't I? I don't even have a fireplace to put that wood in in here. Hey, do I have anything in my chest? No, it's empty. All right, let me go find a neat place to sit down. Let's sit right here at the bar. And I will read you my next story, okay? I want to read you the physicalities of werewolves. And this isn't a very long book, so this will be short today. Experimentation in the Physicalities of the Werewolf by Raymond Prex. Were far too many books, such as this one, begin with some sort of justification some reason or study is concocted in the hopes that the writer's obsession will be seen in a more noble light. I make no such pretensions. No werewolf killed my family. None ever threatened me personally, nor even an acquaintance of mine. My obsession is born out of simple curiosity with a strong dose of hatred for the unnatural. Is it possible to hate something without having been done harm by it? I am no philosopher, and thus here ends my introduction on with my stories now. I have endeavored over the course of several decades to perform a complete study of the physical nature of the creatures that we call werewolves. I overlook entirely the origins of this plague, whether it is acquired voluntarily or inflicted, and how one might be cured. Such matters are filled with too much guesswork and rambling second-hand inanities from farm hands. Subject A. Captured in Morrowind while in beast form. Makeup, male. Breton in his true form. Notes. Subject shows an unusually high degree of control over his transformations. Experiment 1. The subject's bodily proportions were thoroughly measured before, during, and after the transformation. As expected, the proposition, the pr proportions, I'm sorry kids, I can't even read, were identical while in true form, but some minor swelling of the head was observed immediately after the return. Changes observed during transformation follows. 
23% increase in shoulder width, 17% narrowing of the hips, 47% strengthening of arms, 7% increase in finger length, not accounting for claws. As for the legs, the lengthening of the foot to several times its normal length seems to account for the otherwise negligible changes in the thigh region. Experiment number two. The subject was coerced into changing as rapidly and as frequently as possible at various times and at various levels of duress. Transformation times and effects were not viewed to change notably. Subject expired, including the tests. He tested that wolf so hard that he had died? Holy cow. Experiment 13, or B, I forget what I read before. B, captured in Cyrodiil, already imprisoned by local authorities in true form, makeup, female, Nord in her true form, notes subject's large size in both true and transform forms makes an excellent fit for our vivisection. Oh, is he going to cut into her? I believe I may have been the first to witness a werewolf transform apply its effects on the internal workings of a creature. Hmm. The heart is the first thing to swell, long before the lungs or the bones shift to accommodate it. This may account for the intense chest pains that some of the afflicted report directly before their changes. Hmm, that's interesting. More interesting were the changes observed in the muscles of the legs. I had expected a strengthening, as the beasts are known for great power and speed, but they also seemed to change color into a dusky brown. This could also be attributed to blood loss from the procedures. Before the subject expired, oh, this one's going to die too. Oh, he's working on a dead one. I worked applying some known remedies for the disease directly to internal organs. Wolf's bane petals applied to the bones seemed to render them brittle, and the rib cage nearly collapsed at the touch of the juice of ripened belladonna berries. And the rib cage nearly collapsed at the touch. The juice of ripened belladonna berries was pressed directly into the veins and they could be seen to shrivel behind the flow as it moved through the system. Upon reaching the heart, the major vessels pulled away completely and subject expired within minutes. That's the end of this book. Holy cow, is that all he found out about werewolves? B and subject A. Wolfer crying out loud. He only he only experimented on two werewolves. They both died, of course. How strange. Alright. Let's walk over there and put this book away where it belongs now. Where's my uh door over here. This is my starting my first storage place. Activate bookshelf. Okay. And what am I going to store? Wolf. Werewolves. Okay. Oh, well, that's looking better. Well, I'm standing here. After I leave you guys, I shall put the rest of my books 
that I have read in there also. So I will see you all for now. Goodbye, grandkids. Please come back and join me another time when I shall read you another book. Being an older Dearborn is so interesting. I love reading all books. I hope you shall be enjoying them also. Bye, grandkids. <laughs>